Hey Miners, Money King here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to build a GPU rig for 250 bucks. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I so I made a challenge to to everybody and I I did do the challenge and there was a couple little extra added costs that I didn't see at the end. And one of them was some type of hard drive. So right now it's roughly about 265 bucks, okay? So just full transparency. I know the people who are gonna be the nitty gritty who are gonna really dial in on that freaking price point are gonna be trolling me in the comments right now, so thank you. But roughly 250 bucks, we're gonna go over all the specs and everything like that of what we got. Now, I did order 98% of this from Branding Coin. You can check his BC PC shop out in the Shopify down below. So I highly recommend that you go out and check out his shop. He always has really competitive prices. And yes, the hardware is used, but it's always in good working condition, right? And I did ask Brandon to not give me any deals like discounts or anything like that. So this way you can kind of replicate what I did. And he is going to be, hopefully, uh, he did say he was going to try to put a package together for like 250 bucks. Now the motherboards in some parts might change obviously because he doesn't have like 10 or 20 items of everything, right? So your mileage may, may vary, but it will be similar parts, right? For about the same price. Okay, so first up is going to be our motherboard, which is going to be the Gigabyte GA270P-D3, okay? And it's nothing fancy. It has three full slots, and then it has three um, uh, X1 slots on this board as well. It, um, it also came with four gigs of RAM, which should be enough to operate our Hive OS, which is... And then it also came with an Intel Celeron G3930. In this, in this, in this first item here, we have our motherboard, we have our CPU, and we have our RAM, right? Which is really, really important here. So the motherboard isn't, it's not all frills, but hey, this is gonna get us in the door and get us GPU mining really quickly, right? Now the next item to go over will be the Corsair uh power supply i got now he did give me a 1500 watt one this is full disclaimer for transparency you will probably get between a 700 and 850 watt power supply from him the reason that i got the 1500 watt one was because a customer returned it said it was missing cables and he just gave me a deal on it because he didn't want to deal with it right so i got this one just just because it was they said that it was missing cables. So you should expect to get about a 700 to, you know, 800 watt power supply from Brandon. But otherwise, so far the, the power supply looks to be in great condition. And um, so, and it's, this is a Corsair AX1500i. Now, like I said, you will be, your mileage will vary, probably seven, 800 watt, um, 80 plus gold, um, you know, power supply somewhere around there, right? Brandon was nice enough to also include a CPU cooler that would also work for our motherboard, right? Something fancy, it's something great, it's made by a company I'm not even familiar with, but it fits the socket, it's gonna get the job done, right? We don't need frills for this, right? We have the GPU here, guys. This is a, this is a RTX 2060 EVGA, KO GPU. So I do realize that this particular GPU is only six gigabytes, but I think this is a good point for people to start to kind of tinker around. And yes, I went NVIDIA for this particular challenge. Now, that's just because that's what Brandon gave me. But if he gave me Team Red, I would still recommend them either way, Team Green or Team Red. So it's going to be up to the person and whether or not they want and how intensive they want to learn overclocking um now i believe that this path i chose is a good path for people right so number one you have a motherboard that has six slots right you could also use other like adapters from like a times one to to like four or six to get multiple more gpus right but 
probably this motherboard will support about six graphics cards. After that, they kind of get a little unstable and a little wonky, right? Now, the other, th the other factor is, too, is if you get lower wattage GPUs like this, you could most likely populate the entire board, right? All six GPUs if you get about an 800, 750 watt power supply. And it's going to depend on what you mine. Obviously, if you're mining Kapow, probably not possible, right? But if you're mining things that are more energy efficient, then yes, you can probably populate all six of the GPUs on the board. So I picked something that would give you guys expandability as well as the power supply will also give you expandability down the road. So the only, now I'm not gonna do a how to do, build a computer, right? There is so many videos out there for this guys. Please go check out a video on how to build a computer. There's tons of them out there, Jay's Two Cents, all these guys, so many computer PC builders out there. You could Google this a thousand times over, so there's no need for me to make that content. So I'm gonna assume you know how to build a computer or you have the ability to watch a video to figure it out, right? Now, with that being said, the first the the operating system that we are gonna be using is going to be HiveOS. I do have a HiveOS, how to install HiveOS, right here, up here in a card, if you guys wanna go check that out. If you're brand new, don't know what HiveOS is, this will teach you how to install HiveOS and get started, right? There is several ways you could do it. You could do the rig ID and password from the machine locally, or you could just um, burn the ISO image, put your farm hash on, and it will automatically generate a rig for you on your farm. I prefer to do it the farm hash way. Some people like to use the rig IDs and passwords. Everybody, There's multiple ways to spawn the rig. It's There really is no wrong way to do this. To talk about the final piece that I overspent on, on on this particular build will be the SSD. Now, I put it in a price of 15 bucks. You can find them for five or 10 used. You might even have one of these laying around somewhere, right, at your house, you know what I mean, that you can use. You could buy them from Amazon, you could buy them anywhere, you could buy them from Best Buy. I put about 15 bucks, that's about what I paid. This is exactly what I paid for this, so now, I did say earlier in the video that the power supply that I got from Brandon, the gentleman said he was missing SATA cables, but they're in the box. So obviously the guy just wanted to return the unit. So we'll be using a SATA SSD. Now you can choose to use an M.2 or a uh, NVMe in this particular motherboard, right? Because it does have an M.2 M slot. So you could spend more money and have faster storage if you didn't want to mess with all the cables. It's not necessary, but if you're on a budget, I'd recommend this. And if you want to spend the extra money, you can. It'll cost you a little bit more money, but you could have the storage be on the motherboard and then you don't have to run cables for this. Now that we're done, you know, now that we've talked about the parts, Let's go ahead and let me build this real quick and then let's jump over to Hive OS and let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Okay guys, so we're over here in Hive OS and we're mining uh, Pyron Hash right now. And I do have the fans on 100% just for the simple reason of, you know, this is just sitting on a motherboard. There's really no air passing on it. I would recommend at least 85% depending upon where you live. And if this is like gonna be in an air conditioned house or not. So let's go ahead and let's jump back out of the computer and let's talk about more of things we could add on to this and other good points from this to be able to learn on. So what are some options for this? If you were new to mining and you bought this particular setup, what would be your next moves, right? What what else would you need to buy? Well, you're going to need to buy, the next move would you would probably most likely do is there's two routes you can go. One, you can go buy a mining frame, right? You can go to gprogers.com and get one of their mining frames that they have. I highly recommend them, great company. And then, or you could also use like GPU hangers. I know some people, they get the metal baker's racks from like Home Depot or Walmart, whatever, or maybe you have a wire rack at home and you could actually either use zip ties or buy GPU hangers from the Misfit Mining store there. They also make GPU hangers that fit 
on the wires and this will hold your GPUs up. So that's pretty much your two choices I would say is going to be getting a frame or or using the the, the wire rack, right? It's kind of your choice on what you want to do, right? So and how you want your all your cards and rigs to look like, right? So the other thing that you'll need though to expand into either one of those options is going to be this. You're going to need risers, right? Because you're, there's not full six slots on this motherboard. So there's definitely not enough room to fit all six cards on the motherboard, just like you would if you were gaming, right? So you're going to need risers. I would highly recommend going to gpriser.com and getting a six pack of one of their risers. I highly recommend them. I've never had any of them go bad. Now, even if they do go bad though, I, I know Vistang, and if you have a problem with one, I'm sure he's more than happy to help you out and send you out another riser. Okay guys, so now that we, we checked out the expandability, like, you know, the what do we, how do we do this, right? We got the frame, we have the wire rack, we have the GPU hanger. We're definitely gonna need a pack of risers no matter which way we go. And, but there's some more key takeaways from this, right? One, it's gonna teach you how to use crypto wallets, right? And what I mean by that, there's core wallets, there's command line wallets, web wallets. This is gonna also kind of build you in your networking skills, getting things secure and off your main network where you do like your daily average stuff like banking and credit cards, making payments. You don't want this stuff on the same network as you do your daily routines, right? So that's one area that's gonna build your skills in. In the other area too, it's gonna to teach you how to use pools. It's gonna teach you, you know, how to configure your pools and different ports for the pools. And then another aspect is you're gonna learn overclocking. You're gonna learn AMD, Team Green overclocking, how to overclock, how to set power limits, how to use offsets. This is gonna like really build all of those skills at a very low price point, right? Because if you're not sure if you want to do this or not, you don't want to sink a bunch of money into this and then figure out that this is something that's not for you, right? This is a really good low cost way to get into crypto money, build all these fundamentals. And then if you want to make the investment into something larger, like a two, three, four thousand dollar GP mining rig or an ASIC, you know, that's that's when you can make that decision. First, we need to start building your troubleshooting skills because it's not just plug and play and it just prints money, guys. I'm being real with you. There's lots of headache that comes with this and you need to be able to troubleshoot. So if you don't like troubleshooting computers, you definitely do not want to be a crypto miner. So somebody once told me that never invest in something that you don't understand, right? So if you don't know about mining, don't go out and spend four or $5,000 on something do something like this where it's not going to break the bank and it gets you those fundamental skills, right? All right. This is the money can giving you the most hashes and I'll see you next time.